Okay, so we are on the script five of our calculating rainfall deviation project. And so far what we've done is we have learned how to take the Pentar data for rainfall, compute the monthly averages for 30 years, and then compute the monthly totals for the current year and compare the monthly month-wise total to its 30-year uh, average and you can compute the percentage deviation. Now we want, we want to do is apply the same concept, but at a seasonal level. Sometimes you want to you know, compute what was the total monsoon uh, uh, deviation. And sometimes the monsoon arrives late, sometimes it arrives early. So just computing that average over multiple months can help give a better perspective. So uh, we'll demonstrate the same thing using 2016 data. 2016 was a major drought year in the state of Karnataka in India. So we are doing the same process for 2016 and see how the results show up compared to the 30 year average. So we'll do uh, average from 86 to 2015. And uh, this process is exactly the same as before. We are computing the monthly images. We have a monthly rainfall collection, which is the long-term total of that. We do the same for 2016 data. We have the current rainfall data, which is the monthly uh, totals for each of the months. And now we want to compute the seasonal deviation. So we want to now say, give me the total rainfall for the season, which is from July all the way till September. So we'll have to take, uh, we can remember in the previous script, we did a month by month comparison. Here we can just do a seasonal comparison where we compute the seasonal total for the average, seasonal total for the current year, and then we can do the deviation. So how can we filter this collection with uh, which is greater than seven, but less than nine months, right? So we need to apply two filters where you can say, give me all images which are uh, more than month seven, but less than month nine. So this is done used by combining filter is done using uh, this e filter dot and. So you can give it a list of filters and this e filter dot and will combine them. And uh, for the filter to work, uh, both conditions has to match. And then only the image would be passed on to the result. If you want to match either of this condition, you can do e filter or, which is uh, similar, uh, but any of those uh, filters match, the result will be passed on. So this is the way to combine different filters. So let's compute, uh, combine, let's create a combined filter first. And we'll say e filter end, and we'll give two filters. So what are the two filters? The first filter we want to give is e filter equals or uh, greater than month seven, and the second filter is e dot filter dot less than month nine, and we want to make it less than or equals to. So it com computes gets both the July and September as well. So now we have a combined filter. We can apply it to our collection. So let's just compute the rainfall normal, which is from the long-term average. So we'll take our long-term mean collection and filter it using this combined filter. And just to check if it's working properly, we can uh, print it and see if it caught the appropriate images. So I expect three images here, uh, one for each month, July, August, September. And you can see it caught uh, it correct month seven, eight, nine, right? So our filter is working fine. So similarly, I can get the current rainfall. So seasonal uh, rainfall observed, I can name it rainfall. So we'll take the current rainfall collection and apply the same filter to it. Now we have uh, this uh, two collections which are filtered to the month. We can just compute the totals just by doing the sum. So now we have these two images, which is the total uh, current year rainfall and total average rainfall. And then we can just compute the deviation as we did before. We can do seasonal deviation equals uh, with same rainfall observed 
subtract default normal and the whole thing will divide it by all normal and we want the multiply the result by 100 we don't need to set properties because this is just one we're not in a loop so we just have one image so this will be the seasonal deviation image and let's just see let's just see how the results look like so we'll, to display this image first we need our visualization parameters and let's just define min will be zero uh, actually min will be uh, say this is a percentage wise right so it'll be minus 100 percent to plus 100 but it's unlikely that we have like a hundred percent deviation from this. So let's just do a 60 minus 60. And uh, this is, was a drought year, which I know. So max will do a 20% uh, deviation. And then we'll do a palette. And uh, what's a good palette for this? So we'll need a palette from like red to blue. And I have a really good tip for you. You can go to the site called Color Brewer which is a really good site it's cartographically approved colors you can get this color ramps which can uh, be uh, really well designed so i'll just want five color ramp for say this one uh, red to blue and this looks good to me we can now click this export and we'll get this javascript palette here which i can just copy paste it here so now i've got this really nice five color palette from red to blue so I've got the visualization parameters and I'll just add to the map and see the result. And again, we can clip it to the state of Karnataka because we're not clipped so far. So I'll just say, let's just display seasonal deviation. Clipped, clip to, uh, and then this params, and then we can say deviation. And you can see now um, the rainfall deviation, South Karnataka had a huge deviation from the normal. You can click and inspect that and see that this part suffered a major drought in 2016. So the deviation would be quite large. And the North part had you know, more than adequate rainfall during that time. So we have computed this deviation image and you can see when I inquire this, it's still computing because all of this is, you know, for every pixel, it's a lazy computation. So it's just computing for every pixel as we ask for it. And you can see this pixel at the negative 35% deviation from normal. So we want to do now in the next step, we want to now do the deviation per district because a lot of this administration would be at some admin unit level. You so say the state, some parts of the states are facing drought. The remedial action is done at an admin unit level. So if, say you have a shape file, of some admin units and you want to compute what was the deviation for this district or which districts are actually uh, having drought. So uh, we'll do that next. But uh, one useful thing to do is we have done all of this computation and it'll be good to just save our work and you can export the, the result as an image. So in the subsequent step, rather than doing this whole thing again and again, we can just use the image directly. And this is also a good way to speed up your computation. So you do some computation, export the result, import it back and continue your work. And that means you are not uh, doing this, recomputing this image uh, over and over again. So let's just export this image and then we'll import it back in the, the next one. So we'll just say export image and we want to import, export this as an asset. So we don't want to down, uh, download it and upload it again. We can just directly save it to our engine. So I fill the parameters. Let's just fill them one by one. Which image you want to export? I want to export this clipped image. Or actually, let's just you know export the whole thing. We'll just specify our region. 
uh, description and we'll just say is more asset id and you can specify the asset id you want i will right now just say you know users my uh, user id and then this is to e to e projects this is where i'm saving all the uh, data for this make sure the folder exists so if it doesn't exist you can go to your assets and create a new folder first and once you have the folder you can save uh, this we'll just save it as 2016 rainfall this will be the asset and i don't want you can now specify the scale region the region we want is and scale would be 5000 that's it and now you can run the script and you get a new export task i can click run here it'll ask you for a confirmation that you want to export this as an asset here and you can click run and once you click run it will export you can see i just did it before uh, recording this video and my asset is exported so now i can in the next step i can just import this asset and start working towards it so we are moving on to the next script now where we'll compute the deviation by districts so see you in the next script